It's a huge honor for me today to have Heracles. I've been following him on social media for years now. And um, I, I would be really inspired by his posts. Some that particularly stick out would be when he'd go to Expo and there's these legends that you see and you see his arms next to their arms and he actually makes them look small. And, um, and you just think, this guy, is, this guy is incredible. So without further ado, um, if you can give us a 30 second intro and then we'll get straight into the questions that have been sent in. Uh, okay, cool. So you, you, you've covered my name. Uh, you've covered a bit about how people see me on social media. Uh, yep, uh, the name is it's Heracles. Um, gosh, I should be training. So I'll introduce myself. So yep, uh, also known as Horindo or Harry uh, to a lot of uh, family and friends. Um, I have got my status down as a fitness trainer, not really entirely a fitness trainer, but I think that's the sort of category I fit under. Um, I've been training in bodybuilding for just about five years, seriously, in the last probably three, four years. Um, but prior to that, I was doing a bit of boxing, a bit of mixed martial arts. So I've always uh, tend to sort of um, remain physically active, uh, regardless of, of, of what sports. Uh, but most recently, it, it's definitely been bodybuilding. Um, and obviously, since COVID, it's been, been a bit of a challenge. Um, it isn't my professional career. Uh, it is, you know, what started to initially be a hobby uh, eventually turned into a, bit, a little bit of a professional sport on the side. Um, but I do have a separate uh, full time profession uh, career in IT. Uh, and I'll hand it back over to you with some, uh, with some questions now. How big are your arms at your peak? At the moment, uh, they are almost 18 inches. Wow. So how big were Arnie's about, about that size? On a short snake, uh, gosh, no, way bigger. I'm pretty sure in his prime, they were 20 something from what I remember at the top of my head. Wow. So, do you have a problem getting clothes that fit you? Yes. Yeah. If you, if you are a bodybuilder and, and you have arms bigger than the average, um, you will hate shopping at a regular retail store because, and especially now, because it's so annoying because a lot of the retail stores, they, they tend to do slim fit, skinny fit. And they, they're, they're not for bodybuilders. Uh, you know, you're having to buy two sizes up just to fit into something, just to so, say, you know, you look good, whether you're going to a family function or even, you know, on a day out or whatever. Uh, it's a nightmare. I've had to get a couple of suits just for weddings tailored, and it's absolutely annoying. Um, I don't know whether you've ever come across some bodybuilders and you ever see them in suits, like, I don't know, if you look back at some of the Ronnie Coleman or Jay Cutler pictures, they even Phil Heath now, they're wearing suits and it just doesn't look right. And it's that's purely because of the size. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know. Have you ever had any clothes rip on you? Yes. Do you want to share the story? I've, I've had a shirt torn from the back of the arms. I've had trousers ripped straight down the middle. Uh, so much for doing squats. Even dancing is a is a struggle because you have to be very careful what moves you can and can't do. Uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm glad because recently I've managed to buy some clothes which are um, what they call like a stretch sort of material, uh, and and they're a bit more. Com you know, those are the kind of kapre that you can comfortably go to the gorda and do a jonkli mar and not worry about anything anything tearing. <laughs> so where where can you because you're a professional. Where can you get professional clothes if you're athletic or if you're a bodybuilder? There are there are certain brands now out there, gosh, in the last couple of years that do clothes, you know, specifically for for bodybuilders. Uh, again, they very much are the ones I've come across are are the stretch material ones, okay. uh, sort of very th sort of thin stretch. There aren't any particular stores out there, as far as I'm aware, that do clothes for bodybuilders. Although I've come across some that are labeled as muscle fit okay. but again they're very sort of very tight and you know um they're not again i don't think they're for the for the average guy yeah they're probably for like you know somebody who's got some muscles but maybe not 18 inch arms Begin beginner i'm gonna say they're definitely for beginner someone who's just like lean yeah um if i was what we say off season and you're not prepping for any competition and you're not on any prep uh being off season you've got a bit of a gut you know, which 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 is normal because you're the, the amount you're eating, um, and again you'll you'll have the tendency to push heavier weight. So at the moment, I would class myself as being off season. I don't have any six packs at the moment, or you know any abs at all. 
Um, but I know if I wear like a muscle fit tight t-shirt, yes, it might look good for the upper half, but from the from the chest below, I'll probably look about three or four months pregnant. Uh, is how it'll make you look. <laughs> I have this discussion with um, a guy, actually, he used to do bodybuilding. He's been on the podcast. He's a uh, another friend, a, a double up player, Jazz Deep Singh from Birmingham. And um, he, he, we were talking about the, the difficulty with being big, but not still being lean and whether that's possible to do and whether it's especially for vegetarians, because the vegetarians that we know, either they're big and they have a massive gut or they're, or they're very skinny. There doesn't seem to be much of an in-between. Do you think it's possible to do it? 100% of course it is, yeah. Um, it very much falls down to your daily nutrition uh, intake and, and, and your, your daily routine of, of what sort of workouts you do. It's very easy. I think where people think, oh, it's impossible to hold a good amount of muscle mass and look lean at the same time. You could do it. Of course you could do it. There's plenty of guys that are doing it now. It, it's, just, it's just down to your daily diet. Uh, you know, uh, having repeated a couple of times, um, uh, you get to learn more about your own body, what you can and can't do. and Because every, everybody, every, everybody's different and everybody's body works differently as well. And, you know, there's some things that might work for you and might, may not work for others. Uh, I've, come across, there are, I've come across a couple of uh, vegan bodybuilders who are absolutely doing great in the sport, in, in, in bodybuilding, uh, who tend to hold a good amount of muscle mass um, with very minimum body fat. Um, whether that's something to do with down to, you know, the supplements or they're taking or down to a very sort of strict diet. Yeah. And being vegan, you know, everyone used to initially believe that it was impossible to be vegan or vegetarian and still do bodybuilding at the same time. It's actually not. There is a slight delay, in, if anything, there's a slight delay in sort of protein intake and the type of proteins that you, you know, you, your body will take in order to build muscle. Yes, that, that, you know, I don't know how much you might have looked into. I'll give you, I'll give you some good examples which I've discussed in the coach cast as well. Like you know, there's plenty of documentaries out there which are on the basis of you are what you eat. Um, and the science very much behind that is talks about if you're if you're non-veg and you are consuming meat off another animal and you are consuming uh, muscle mass from another from another animal, you are partially genetically inheriting some of the animal's genes. So if you eat muscle, you're going to put on muscle. Basically, that's just to simplify for you not to get into uh, the nitty gritty of it. Whereas if you're vegetarian and you're relying on products for soya, for example, or tofu. Um, you, you, you are limited, but you're not exempt. So it can be done, but at a much slower rate. So the stuff I've looked into is, is I've looked into different, uh, research papers and then, and then I find with the nutrition field, it's very polarizing. So, you know, people have their, you know, views and they might be like very pro keto, or they might be very pro a certain approach. And they would like live and die by it. Like everybody else is, everybody else is wrong, and they should be killed. And um, like Joe Rogan is a good example, right? So he's, yeah, he, he, yeah he's, um, he has his opinion. Um, I find nutrition is very a, a very polarizing topic. But um, the medical medical association for athletics in in the US they uh, recommend for athletes to have. Um, Two grams of vegan protein, two grams of protein for um, vegetarians and vegans. Sorry, for vegans, uh, for every kilogram of body weight, which is what bodybuilders have anyway. But the the key takeaway from that, what I what I got from it, is that they recommended more protein intake for vegans than they did for um, carnivores, people who eat meat. Yeah. So, so there's there's clearly they appreciate that there's some. Um, difficulty in absorption or synthesis but onto the onto that question because what what i got from your last podcast the one i one i listened to was you talked about a one hour fasted cardio in the morning and um you talked about 30 minutes you're doing on the stair master in the evenings just for prep right before competition and and i was intrigued in terms of if if you've got a 16 18 year old 21 year old who wants to get into bodybuilding and what kind of volume of time 
are, are they looking at in terms of training and in terms of diet? What would you recommend if someone wants to go down that route? Because people look at you, they look at things on Netflix, they look at stuff on YouTube and they, they aspire to be like you guys. But what kind of, what kind of time does that take an investment? A good couple of years, um, you, you know, to, to see a huge difference in, in results. A year, even, uh, depending on what your goals are uh, and where you want to get to. Um, it, it would initially start from what you currently look like because there will be some 16, 17-year-olds who are above the average weight um, or, 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 to politely put it, fat, overweight, um, which find it a hell of a lot more challenging to be able to build a leaner physique within a year. I'm not saying it's not possible, of course it's possible, but it's going to be down to consistency uh, and also uh, have the, the level of determination because at the age of 16, 17, you're, it, it's very hard to follow that kind of strict diet. You're going to want to enjoy foods at that age. You know, you're going to want to consume sugars and fried foods and enjoy your burgers and pizzas. That's, that's, that's a given. I, I, I can't imagine anyone at the age of 16 or 17 being that strict with their diet um but if, if they are then brilliant um i would i wouldn't suggest you know jumping on huge amounts of protein shakes or uh, adhering to any other supplements because at that age your body is uh, and your hormones are naturally rapidly growing as they are uh naturally at fast at faster rate um i would get them to focus more around what they're eating and not to overdo it on, on regular workouts. So I've seen some 16 year olds who'd be attempting to push a stupid or heavy amount of weight in the gym. Um, my thought process towards that is, well, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be putting your body through that already, but there, there's some that are. My advice would be just to sort of take it easy and not push above a moderate weight, uh, probably half of the body weight that they currently are and just sort of maximize on volume on reps. Um, there's various different exercises. So individuals who have a lean approach, a number of, uh, I have been approached by young lads under the age of 18, who kind of said, right, what, you know, and the first, the first question usually is as they approach you, is what protein shake do you have? And, 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 it, and it makes you smile because going back when I was at that age, I'd ask the first question, that was my, my first question. Because it, it, you think that, it was some kind of magic potion that, you know, turned them into this. And it was, you know, because you see all these bodybuilding magazines and it's so misleading, even when I was at that age, because, you you know, they'd be advertising, um, you, you see the likes of Jake or Ronnie Coleman advertising muscle tech, um, holding this massive tub of muscle tech. And I used to look at it like, that's what I need to buy. That's what I'm lacking. And you, you know, you'd use that daily, but you're not seeing the difference. And little do you know, there's a hell of a lot more behind just that talk that they're holding yes they're advertising it for marketing purposes you know uh, or whatever but that's not your understanding you're just seeing and believing uh, so therefore you it's it's and, and that's the direction you're going to head in um so don't fall uh, under misguided marketing adverts of huge guys promoting you know uh supplements which which aren't useful you know there are tons of supplements out there i'll give you another one uh, PCAAs, you don't you don't need them at that age. You, you definitely don't. What you need is if you're a non-reg is to consume a good amount of eggs. So you know have as much as ready breaks, oats, wheat breaks for your for your, for your breakfast. Consume as much as natural fruit and veg. Fruits will be you know anything from uh, bananas, blueberries, etc., which are the most common used in fitness and bodybuilding. Um, vegetables, gosh, get your greens in you know, as much as you can. So that would be anything from spinach, um, uh, preferably the, the Gora style spinach, uh, not the not the sag with tons of fuel uh, uh, in it, but uh, which, uh, which again is a bad thing if you're at that age, because I suppose it'd be good for your bones uh, if, if, if you're working out. Um, and uh, adhere to what we call complex carbs. So there'd be plenty of things like, you know, you can jump onto like, sweet potatoes, uh, or even uh, you know baby potatoes um, and white rice. I, I don't really recommend. I've never recommended brown rice to anyone because they're, they're a hell of a lot harder. To, they might be healthier to some extent, but if you're training, they are a hell of a lot harder to d digest. Um, I think so there's really well. 
Um, you've given a lot of detail there. And I think anybody who's watching this is going to take takeaways from that. Um, when, you, when you were getting ready for competition, how many hours were you, in a week were you putting in for food prep plus, plus the actual training sessions? Uh, with, with me, I'm, I was very fussy. I would always do, there's a lot of guys I've come across. So I will put this out there as well. There's a lot of guys that will probably prep their meals for three, four days in in advance. So they've, they've you know, they've spent a couple hours in the kitchen and they've probably prepped uh, meals for day one, day two, day three. I tried that and I didn't like it because especially if it's meats, you're A, at risk of leaving that meat for a while by day three. The other thing I didn't enjoy, I realized that a lot of the food was getting dry. So, and then by day three, it's hard to absorb. And I became very fussy. And it's even harder to eat when you're dieting. So it's bad enough you're not enjoying the food, but it's even worse if the food isn't great. And so I used to get up six o'clock every morning. I used to prep my meals, um, you know, and then I used to, so all, all what I did used to do is get up at uh, six o'clock in the morning and I do my hours fasted cardio, which is what was required, you know, to drop some body fat. Straight after that, uh, while I'm consuming breakfast, which would be my oats and eggs, scrambled egg oats, I'll be there just sort of um, prep my food because it takes less than half an hour. So that, whether that's me, you know, uh, grilling my chicken, which is common, uh, you know, get stick some uh, boiled potatoes in, get a tin of tuna, and it, it's the most basic stuff that you're you're making, but you could do it in less than half an hour. And you've prepped that. So already you've made four meals for the day. I'm not worried about meal five because I'll have that when, when I get back home after the gym. So it's these sort of things that you you sort of prepare in advance. Okay. Um, you're looking at probably about three hours a day that you're investing in, in your physique. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, three hours a day. Uh, so including your, your sort of training and your meal prep time. Yeah. How much of bodybuilding do you think is a mental game? 100%. 100%. You can't, you, 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 you will fail to gain results in bodybuilding if your mindset isn't, isn't straight. Is if you don't have a strong positive mindset, there's zero stress, um, and you're getting more than eight hours of sleep, then you're seeing a drastic change. Uh, I've been through a phase, especially my first competition, where I got used to sleep for like six hours, and that's because I, I used to enjoy staying up late nights watching Netflix, um, you know, or just being on the internet, being on your phone, being on social media because that's addictive it was. Um, and I realized it was it was ruining my routine because I'd be getting up in the morning and I'm like, I'm dragging my body and the body's so fatigued and drained because it's not getting the rest it needs. It might be getting the nutrients because you're you're eating, but it's important that you get that that rest so that you get the, the right amount of muscle recovery time as well for the body i think i think there's a pandemic in, in the sense that with social media and with netflix and i'm i'm victim to this as well i'm not going to lie um so i will have the netflix binges and i'm just intrigued to learn how you overcame that was it just you just switched off one day and thought you know what i'm going to focus on getting enough rest and recovery and uh, or you know, was there a particular event or was it just being around people who were very disciplined or it's, um, it's, it's, it comes down to the point where you realise that you're not getting the results that you want or the results that you should be getting. Um, and then you start to sort of map out all the flaws. Um, so lack of sleep, uh, again, you know, you'll probably, you, you may have probably come across this um, on, on several social media accounts where they talk, generally talk about, uh, not just in bodybuilding, uh, generally in any sport, uh, you need to obtain a good amount of sleep for muscle recovery, muscle and mind recovery. Um you know, to have a good fresh start for the following day. And there are some individuals or some bodybuilders that I've come across that will get a really early night, as early as nine o'clock. And, you know, for some people, the nine o'clock is the time they get home. They're going to eat. And they're not going to go to bed till 11, 12 o'clock because they want a bit of TV time or it might be a bit of quality time with a partner or family or whatever. And it's, and it's, it's, that, it's those sort of challenges. You have to then discipline yourself and build a sustainable routine that's going to get you the results that you want to get. Because without that, your your results will be slow or next to none. It'll be progress, but it'll be slow progress. That's really interesting and very valuable. With with bodybuilding, the, I presume there's some plateaus, so you kind of increase 
and then you you kind of flatline for a bit. How how have you stayed motivated? I know in the previous podcast you talked about um, sometimes you'll listen to something or you you'll get yourself in the right frame of mind through different techniques. Are there any resources you can recommend or or any kind of self talk that you do to get yourself in, in it? or how do you overcome these these barriers or or roadblocks during your training? Um. The, the, one of the things that you have to realize is you just have to repeatedly ask yourself the question every time you know you put your foot into the gym or every time you get up in the morning what's your what's your goal for today what's your purpose um in my second competition i disciplined myself in many ways whether it was around work stress or family stress i i, I built i built my mind in, in in a state that i would switch off my problems and i'd i'd, I'd focus on that one purpose because if I didn't do that, um, I would be mid-set messaging on my phone, mid-set checking messages. And that's a huge distraction. And I kid you not, and even till now, you see uh, all the youth, almost everyone in the gym is constantly messaging on their phone. And the social media I've seen in the world of today is there's more selfies and less workouts. You know, you don't. I don't. I don't ever see people posting work workouts. I see people posting a fancy gym picture with a fancy Google caption or or a Google. I hate to say it. It is. It is a reality because you look at a lot of the captions; they're all the same, and they all talk about positive mindset and d- doing great things, which is great. And I suppose that's to some extent that's motivating to others, especially others who are who are new. But for someone like me who's been it for years, I I rather just see you do a workout. I'd rather see what you're doing different than I don't. And, you know, I've always been the one to learn uh, or, be, or be told, try this method or try that method. Um, there's um, th- there's a term or a terminology that I would use that there's individuals out there who are in fitness or in the gym who have all the gear but no idea. And it's true because they might have the most fancy camera equipment but they're clueless. Their workouts make no sense. There's no theory behind their workouts whatsoever. Um, so I think that's my concerns in, in the new generation of, of fitness and bodybuilding and what I'm seeing. There's a small handful of which are very serious, and especially the ones that are more at competition level, not the ones who are more at just, I'm on it for the likes. And um, do you have, do you, how do you get yourself out of a rut? Because everyone goes through them, right? Days when they they're not feeling motivated not every day is gonna be perfect gosh i've had i've had some really bad workouts but i think um not every day is gonna be perfect you might have had a bad day uh you know but the, the good the good the good part is at least you still made it to the gym because there are some individuals that be like yeah i'm gonna grab a pizza i'm having a bad day and you know i've been there i i you know i'm i'm yeah you know, i'm talking about it because i know that because i've been there and i've i've done the same thing um you're your mindset isn't every day going to be a hundred percent, but the fact that you've you've come that far, even after a rough day, is still is still going to be a good day because it's progress. It's regardless of which way you look at it. You know, you might have just not you might have gone in and you might have done half the time or pushed half the weight, <clears throat> but the fact that you've kept your body active and you still you still enter those doors at the end of the day is well done to you. And the next question I have is, is what does weight training or what does bodybuilding mean to you? So if, if I took every gym away out of the world and you didn't have access to what would it, what would it, you know, how, how has it impacted your life in a positive way, like mentally, physically, or, you know, from a social aspect, um, you know, what does it mean to you? It it did during COVID. There was no gym. Um, (laughs) um, So when, when, the gyms were closed uh what you'll find is for me bodybuilding wasn't my life um it was you know even though it looked like it played played a huge part i enjoyed doing it i initially started it off if i'm honest was because when instagram first came about and i saw individuals posting their workouts i thought well i go to the gym daily maybe i should post mine and as i did it i started getting good feedback from other people uh, you, you know strangers and individuals that I did I didn't know of who were local um and I think at the time there's just a handful of me Azad Singh uh Jaggi uh Indian body coach um 
discussion just trying to remember now. And, you know, there's a the, the very small amount of indiv individuals that were doing it. And as we were doing it, we, uh, you know, more and more people got involved. And as you're probably aware, already aware, in the last sort of two, three years, everyone's a PT now, you know, or, or some kind of coach. And, you know, or, you know, teaching another individual, uh, so, you know, giving them diet plans and workout plans and whatnot. Um, so I've seen that, I've seen that drastic change, but just to, sorry, I know we've gone off topic, but just to answer your question, I, I went in, I went into photography. That is my second passion. So, yeah. so, um, you know, I've, 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 got, I've got a good camera kit, um, and what, you know, me and the missus would do, even though we weren't allowed to restrictions, I've got kind of chase just around five minutes down the road from where I live. I'd go out and, and I'd do that and I'd work on my editing skills. I would work on different cooking skills. You know, there's this because there's plenty of other things that you can do. Bodybuilding, a lot, a lot of, for a lot of people, bodybuilding is life. For the ones that it's a career, I understand because that's your career. But for the, if it's not your career, gosh, there's tons of other things that you can take up apart from Netflix. Um, <laughs> you know, um, for me, yeah. So if, if I didn't, and you know, people generally ask me the question like, if you didn't do bodybuilding, what would you do? And I said, my answer is straight up photography. Um, so that, that's my second question. That's amazing. Um, I want to, I, I just want to give you kudos because I went through your Instagram and um, you know, the amount of people you help, you know, without, you don't have anything to sell, you don't have any reason to help people, but you're always very open to um, helping people out in any way, shape or form. So, you know, there's very few people in the world like that in the fitness space you know everyone's got a, an angle or they they've got a product to push or they've got an agenda so um i have to give you credit for that um okay. and I asked about getting shredded because I, I work with a lot of athletes i work with the olympic team and um i'm going to be doing the commonwealth games next year and and these people train all the time but they don't look like bodybuilders right they 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 are lean they are muscular but they don't they're not shredded they don't look like you guys do so i think very people from the outside are very intrigued at how you achieve that is that purely diet or is that a combination of no no no, no. Uh, again even in the olympics gosh there'd be some swimmers uh with a, with a with a fairly lean physique um you know which and they're consuming ten thousand calories a day yeah and, that, and that's incredible because some bodybuilders don't even consume that much um but uh, for me, in bodybuilding, to obtain the amount of muscle mass I did uh, at the time, uh, whilst competing was, you know, you, you what we refer to as enhancement um, supplements, uh, also known as uh, steroids, which I think are now not seen as much as a, as a secret as they were maybe five or more years ago. Uh, now you look around, and, and for me, it's very easy to tell whether an individual is taking those sort of uh, enhanced supplements or not, because having trained for so many years um, and obtaining the amount of strength I have, not this is just not me personally, this is obviously having trained with several individuals. And that's one thing I love doing is I, I love training with different people because I love learning. But at the same time, I'm also getting their understanding of what they're doing different, whether it's diet, nutrition wise, uh, it, are there any particular supplements they're taking now? A lot of people shy away from admitting or talking about certain supplements that they're taking, especially in this day and age in the bodybuilding world. So when you talk about steroids, immediately people are like, "Oh wow, I don't know anything about them," like, "Oh, I don't want to talk about them." Um, it's it's no longer a secret. Like I think it's pretty obvious. You know, there are some individuals that you may look on social media. And it's, it's, it's pretty obvious um, because nobody can naturally obtain that level of strength. There might be some vegetarian or vegan bodybuilders who have incredible strength more than a professional bodybuilder. And it raises the question, how do you achieve that level of strength of being on a vegetarian vegan diet? It's impossible. Therefore, you know, they, they may not come out of the, of the closet admitting whether some of these federations that they compete under are tested or not, a lot of them aren't, even though they make class that they are. Um, and the same goes for the Olympics. Uh, there are a lot of Olympic athletes which are on enhancement drugs. 
uh, especially for, for for the way they train, uh, for the number of uh, injuries that they were coming from. Um, I when I when I initially I was always scared when when I heard about you know you know steroids and injections and needles and the the, the harms that it could do to the body because immediately you think of the side effects. You 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 generally go on Google and you look at all the the side effects that people have you know uh, suffered uh, or you know. Uh, gosh near enough death experiences maybe um before even going down that route i spoke to individuals who were consuming who were very open about it um especially not in, and these these individuals went from our culture um and they were very open and honest uh you know they they didn't want to do it but they had to do it on a, on a competition level um you know it's and when i when i initially went down the route of steroids I was incredibly judged for it because, and it made me wonder if these were the same individuals that were clapping at Arnold Schwarzenegger for achieving the body he did, but he didn't achieve it naturally. So why does he get a, a applause and, and everybody else who wants to go down that route gets a thumbs down? Um, anyway, so there, there's a number of individuals that I even know, in, you know, to this day and age on social media, who might be consuming that, but are afraid to talk about it. And this is what this is what really annoys me. Like, um, what what I am against is influencers who talk about achieving unrealistic goals, uh, but behind the scenes be obtaining supplements that they won't guide others. That's what I am against. I'd rather be honest. Uh, I only started taking them uh, for, for my second competition after realizing my physique was nowhere near what I was up against when I went up on that stage naturally in my first competition. Because I, I look back and I'm thinking, gosh, I look, I look terrible compared to those guys. Um, again, I did that under uh, under guidance. I had a coach. Uh, the second time, I took a year out and I, I kind of realised what I where I was going wrong. And I desperately wanted to go on stage. I desperately wanted to achieve that physique. I did it under guidance of a coach. And I'm glad I did because it's a professional coach and they've been, it's, it's someone that's been in that industry for, gosh, 30, 40 plus years. Um, otherwise, I probably wouldn't have gone down that route. And for, uh, up until now, I would only ever do you know, supplements under guidance. We talk, we see, we see professional bodybuilders like, you know, I know we spoke about Rich Piano, for example, who was very open about this. Um and he he touched base on 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 the enhancement steroids and, and and drugs and whatnot on several occasions in his videos. Very open about it. But I suppose you know he's probably not going to be the best example because obviously look where he ended. You know, uh, but then I'll give you another example: a young bodybuilder, upcoming one, which is Dallas, uh, who also entered. I think it was just the one Olympia competition uh, in two thousand and eighteen. I think it was. Um, but then he, and and look where he ended up. But I think it just doesn't fall down to steroids. I think steroids do play a big part. But there's so many other enhancements that they're taking, like growth hormone, for example. I think Dallas I think Dallas was on insulin and the post mortem said he choked on a bagel or something. He's trying to get he's trying to get carbs down himself fast enough and he went into yeah. a diabetic uh, shock. Yeah. So I think yeah, those both of those guys are apparently injecting insulin. Um, yeah. So insulin works really well with growth hormone, so which is HGH. Uh, even now, gosh, I could I know plenty of bodybuilders which are running that, that level of cycle uh, purely to obtain a good amount of muscle mass because that's what it supports and that's what they're trying to achieve. There are several risks behind this, and this is why you know you've got to be very very careful. I can't. I mean, I I, I even now. I will get DMs in my Instagram from individuals asking me what cycle I'm on. And I don't really mind answering their questions. Not that you know, I'm, I'm on any particular cycle because I'm not exactly competing. Um, but it worries me because when I look at their Instagram page, they look, gosh, below the age of 18. And I'm looking and thinking, well, for my, am I, and I kid you not, my first question to them, how old are you? And they'll say, you know, something like 19. I'm like, okay, well, how long have you been training? Six months. You do not want to go down that route. I would have you training really hard with good consistency and diet for at least three, four years before you even consider a route. And even if you want to consider a route, are you competing? 
why, why do you want to take them? Like, what's your understanding of them? Do you think that they will achieve quick results? And they actually don't. People's misunderstanding of steroids, thinking that they, they will attain quick, easy results, they actually don't. When I had to, when I had to go down that route, I had to make sure my diet was on point. I had to increase my water intake. I had to train twice as hard. So it becomes more stressful on the body than what people actually think it is. So a couple of questions for you on that, because I, you know, it's a big topic and there, there's a lot of spin-offs on that. Um, are you, if you don't mind me asking, obviously it's, it's completely up to you, but are you taking anything? Yeah. Sorry? Are you taking anything at the moment? No. Okay. So you're doing really well because the people that I, I've, I've run a clinic, right? I run two clinics. So I know a lot of people who are taking steroids, human growth hormone, um, those are the two main things that I know people take. But then even within the steroids world, you've got a big, you've got test, you've got trend, you've got so many different types of substances you could be, you could be taking. Right. So, um, you're doing really well. Like you, you, you're, you're, my strength isn't as near as where I want it to be. I know it could be better, but my risk is now, right, mentally, I have to think. I'm in my mid-30s, right? Uh, especially if I want to have more kids, which I do. Do I want to risk the root of steroids and put my natural test levels at risk? Because that's what happens. Yeah. Especially, especially when you get to the, especially when you get, you know, past the age of 30, um, the, the last thing you want to do, especially if you're not competing, is why put your body at risk? What you, who are you doing it for? What are you going to achieve out of it? Unless I, was, unless, unless I had a goal in mind, then yeah. For me at the moment, uh, the only way I've main, managed to maintain my strength is through other supplements because there's, there's HCL creatine, which I heavily rely on. But above all, I make sure that I eat a lot. Like, I kid you not, I, everyone thinks I'm still lean. I'm not. I have like a pregnant belly. Um, uh, purely because of the amount that you're consuming and that will help, so help you maintain your strength. But it, once you've been down that route and you have consumed steroids, it's always going to be in your blood. It'll take probably a year or so before it comes out of your system. I, I was going to compete. Uh, I think the last time I ran a steroid cycle was last year when gyms had started opening up again and I wanted to compete last year and last year was going to be my last competition and then I started, I started a cycle six weeks in when they announced the gyms are closing again I came off it immediately because I thought right there's if I'm not training properly and gyms aren't open and I'm not doing the, the level or the you know the amount of training I should be doing I'm not going to do it but there was individuals who what we you know what we call in the bodybuilding term when you're running a cycle is called cruising so they'll take small amounts of a cycle. So it'd be uh, particular types of steroids, but they'll run small doses, whether it's a couple of times a week or once a week, just so that it's in their, in their, it's in their system. Yeah, so I know, I know two guys who come to see me who don't produce any test anymore, like naturally, because of um, their history. And they can't get treatment on the NHS because obviously the NHS was like, well... Yeah. It's not a medical condition. Um, the second thing is, um, I, I some other guys I know who come to see me, they, they don't feel so good when they when they're not, you know, like their their energy levels. They haven't got that kind of. Um, they they ha they're just not they're just not feeling how they yeah. use. It. So low, low test levels means that they they look fatigued and they feel fatigued. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's what it comes down to. So I wanted to talk to you. I, I think it's commendable, actually. One, that you're honest about it. And my bugbear is that there's a lot of people taking it who will call themselves lifetime natty. And there's actually one person that I know of who sells supplements for $1,200 or, for a tub of supplements. Right. And he, he says lifetime natty. And, um, and those kind of th that's what really frustrates me because you've got these 16, 17 year old kids who are scrawny they look at they look at men's fitness they look at men's health and they want to look like those guys on the cover and they think it's a shortcut they think you know this guy does this and he looks like this which means if i take this i'll look like that but like you said if you're not consistently training if you don't have the discipline to eat well and train right you're setting your you're messing your life up essentially because 
you're, you're going to have physiological changes which are potentially um, uh, irreversible. Um, yeah. And I study addiction to some degree informally, and I talk to people about addiction, and people say st steads aren't addictive, which is true. They're not addictive, but that feeling that you anything can be addictive, right? Netflix can be addictive. It depends on whether that thing is a crutch for you. So you were able to come off when you didn't want to be on it. And uh, my, my my biggest fear when I when I when I did decide that a it's you know especially if you're afraid of needles, but you have to do it. I, I absolutely hated doing it. Um, uh, so it's 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 a fear of, of of injecting yourself, not knowing how bad is this risk. Because if you hit nerve, it's painful. And you know I have been down that route, and I know plenty of other guys that have. Um, it I realized when when I when I when I came off stage um, after my second competition, um, because there was hardly any water you know in my body, any water retention because you're sort of drying out, um, and because you been running a steroid cycle for so long for so many months your body's under so much stress because you've been on this strict diet so already it's a shock to your body so on top of that you're you know you've done intense amount you've done three hours a day of training to the to the last few weeks where there's any hardly any carbohydrates coming into your body and then the last three days there's hardly any water or you know um liquid coming into your body so there's no there's no salt nothing so you feel absolutely drained so your body's under a lot of stress so the moment i came off that stage and the first thing i kid you not i consumed like three crispy cream donuts and you, you you never appreciate sugar so much um um the next morning i got up i, I actually felt my body was in shock because it was just it'd been under it'd been under so much pressure that once you when you stop you it's actually a really good relief but then, then I'm thinking, if the professional bodybuilders are doing this day in, day out, you know, through the 12 months and the whole year, what what's actually going inside their body? Like, what's going on? Because they are, they are, they, they, they must be under some pressure, some stress, because, you know, you talk about kidney damage, you talk about liver damage. They are professional bodybuilders and whose names I will not mention who are consuming uh, 12 or maybe more different types of tablets a day to support a cycle as well as to support the vitamins and minerals that their body takes. Is that the life you want to be living? Mm. It's, it's, it, it, a whole endocrine system, right? You have to, you can't just control one, you can't just control free tests. There's, you know, there's, there's a whole system that you have to try and manage. And um, I think that's something that people need to be aware of before they, they, they go down that route, um, whether they, to consistently do that and whether that's something that they want to do um it, so do, what if we get into a bit more specifics if you don't mind me asking yeah. what was your what was your cycle just the reason i ask is not because i'm going to go out and do it it's more so because there's right. okay watch youtube videos and they think this is what this guy does so this yeah. is what i should do but I think you have the first, you have first time experience of it. So you kind of know a bit more about how certain things respond to different people, your, your body, your own body type. And, um, and we talked earlier about trend and how it triggers aggression in some people. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got one patient who um, will probably be watching this and he, he goes on a Coke binge. So he'll go on a cocaine binge after he's had trend. So he'll go, you know, for, two or three days it would just yeah. it seems to affect him quite negatively um psychologically so what's what's your cycle what is is kind of safe if somebody was trying to do it but safely nothing is safe no uh, the honest answer is no is safe uh commonly used individuals who have spoken to in india and, and some of the individuals here is who have the fear of taking taking injections uh, will resort to tablets and the tablets that are out there uh, commonly is known as uh, Dibol, Dynabol very very commonly used to obtain uh, muscle mass and strength however 
it causes, it's, it's known to be highly androgenic, which therefore means it's likely to cause more damage to your liver. Uh, should you fail to consume, um, gosh, I don't know, three or more liters of water a day. Um, on top of that, making sure that you have a, a very good diet and that you are putting your body through the workouts that it should be going through. Individuals say, yeah, I'm, I'm taking d -ball. Um And I, I don't really have a response. And just like making sure that my first question is, are you doing it under any guidance? Who's, who's advised you to take it? Why do you feel the need to take it? Mm. And it's probably because a friend's recommended it and a friend might be a professional bodybuilder who, or someone who might be getting some some guidance of a coach uh, or, or a PT or whoever. Um, so individuals are very, very easily misled because they think everybody, everybody wants quick results, but only very few are willing to put in hard work. Um, and that's a, and that's the reality. Um, there is so much misguidance and misunderstanding around steroids. So if I talk about my own experience, I I did it purely under guidance. And before I even went down that route, I spoke to several individuals uh, who had been you know doing it for uh, years. Um, and some of the stories I heard were scary, but I think their stories were a bit a little bit far fetched, probably because they've been. They, they know that they know they've been down the route of abusing uh some steroids uh for me when i was when i was competing gosh i can i can still remember all the names so within the space of 18 weeks i took the likes of i did take debo for four weeks uh i did take uh cystalin and decanol um mm. and then it, it went down to the route of test went down the route of trend went down the route of mastron uh, there, there was gosh, there was like six, seven different oil injectables that I was consuming. To some extent, you're right; they did increase aggression. I felt like anything small would just make me feel want to just sort of trip. Um, you know, then, then something to normal what I wouldn't usually react. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you are an individual which you're generally, you're naturally, you're generally just short tempered. Please do not take trend because you'll probably end up killing someone. You know, um, and, and, I, and I know that who, who are because they have this like, right. you know, jokes, they have this your jokes aside, that has happened, right? You know, there, there's cases of we know, of it does. Yeah, yeah, of course, it does. Yeah, um, you, you know, there's um, there's been there's been plenty of cases that there's 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 individuals in the gym and you could you, you know what sort of moods and then you know why they're in that way. Um, they, they, but that's just, aggression is just one of the side effects. The biggest one that people don't talk about is insomnia, um, it, and anxiety. Trend is commonly known uh, for individuals uh, will make individuals suffer from insomnia, lack of sleep. They won't go to sleep. Um, you know, uh, anxiety. That's that's in the world. So there's there's many, but that's just not only from trend. There, there, there's a few of the stairs that will cause that issue. So just, um, there is no, there is no safe route to go down, really. You know, no. and no. if you decide to do it, you should do it under the supervision of somebody who has experience guiding people through that process. Don't just get it off your your neighbor because he says you should do this because his cousin told him. Yeah, no, it's, it's more friends or my friends doing, it and I've seen him, and he's got more strength than I have in the gym. Um, his, his, his body's looking a lot better than mine. I want to. I want to achieve what he's achieving now. You don't know. You might be suffering from some medical condition that he may not be. So therefore, the side effects are much larger for you than they are going to be for him. But at the same time, he's probably not sharing a full experience of what his body's actually going through because they don't. You know, um, a lot of a lot of guys don't like to talk about it. Uh, you know, I, I kid you not. If I, if you want to dig deeper, I've had conversations with individuals who talk about that they've abused something that they shouldn't have, and they've got zero sex drive, um, which is which is you know a big scare for you know for some of the guys. Yeah, um, guy. Yeah, you're going down the divorce route. Um, um, so it's that th there's so there's so many issues with going down that route if if you're not taking the right guidance.
So I can't stress. Yeah, I, I think I think that's definitely reiterated. Um, with HGH, do you have any experience with that? Or because that's that's trending, isn't it? A lot of people. It we're not just with bodybuilding, but I know a lot of BBA guys who who claim that it speeds up recovery, so they will take it because of that. And um, so, yeah, but yeah, you know. There are some professional uh, bodybuilders out there who claim they're natural, and they can. And I'll tell you why. It's because uh, HEH isn't a steroid. Um, you know, it's it's an it's a natural enhancement to the body, so it will just genetically enhance you. So HEH has uh, two hundred and fifty something aminos. If I'm right. I think it's more Where, uh, what, with what you're injecting into your body, right? Which is one of them will improve muscle recovery, your skin cells, you know, uh, hair growth, nails, bones, everything. Um, the body naturally produces daily 52 aminos. So, so you can see why uh, they will get the 3D muscle definition look the way they do. I've never been down the route of HGH purely because um how expensive it is uh, people are selling it for a couple of hundred quid i'm sorry that's not that's not the true real hgh uh, 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 gosh a uh, a pen of uh, uh, pfizer by uh, gh will probably cost you 400 or more which will probably give you depending on how much iu you're running uh, a day um Gosh, it'll probably last you a couple of weeks. Wow. And and just to um, reinforce that, HGH isn't safe either, right? Like you don't know if you have any cancer cells, so it's going to make everything grow, not just not just yeah. Uh, muscle. So the, yeah, so the risks are if you are a cancer patient or you have cancer, you don't know, you're actually modifying that cancer in your body. So that's, that. you're right. Uh, uh, not just cancer, if there's any other disease in your body that you're not aware of. Uh, without any any sort of medical guidance, as as what they say, um, you will be also uh, enhancing enhancing that disease. Um, the other side effects are, I know, um, again, um, being in this industry for for a while now, um, people will experience um, um, over over um, what's the right word? Your tendons and your ligaments will also expand which will cause um, problems in movement, certain, certain movements, especially in your arms and your elbows, knees even. Um, there's an individual who was running it for a couple of years to the point where he was struggling to grip because it would hurt. Uh, and the pain would come, everything from down the wrist up to his, up his fingers. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, nothing is safe, but I suppose too much of anything is bad for you anyway. Uh, and the same goes for, you know, any any even supplements like too much protein is bad for you. You know, I used to, I used to speak to guys who'd be like, yeah, I'm taking three, four protein shakes a day. I'm like, three, four protein shakes a day? Where's where's your food? Like, oh, oh no, no, I don't, I don't need it. It's like, yeah, you do. Your body needs food. You know, the, uh, people, people are so misguided that real food is what makes real muscles, not shakes and, and supplements. Yes, they do. They do support muscle growth they do support recovery but you are what you eat so whatever you're going to consume is how your body's going to react but if you're going to constantly feed it artificial and processed foods don't expect the best results um last question because i know i've taken up um so much of your time this is gold right. you know there's so this is a conversation I, I've really wanted to have with somebody, but there's so few people who are willing to be candid about this stuff. Um, like you said, you know, people, what, everyone who I know who has um, done steroids, um, other people don't know that they've done that. So, you know, it's kind of like, that's a shame because it means that, again, similar, completely unrelated topic, but IVF, every couple that I know who's been through IVF, they don't tell anybody. And yeah. how, is anybody, how is anyone else going to get help to know the right, you know, navigate that journey if other people don't share their experiences? So this has been, this is going to help a lot of people. I'm confident of that. Um, are there any essential, if you've got a kind of weekend warrior like me who, who goes to the gym, but very 
uh, you know, fitness based, just trying to maintain their health. Are there any essential supplements that you, that person should take or like a multivitamin or creatine or protein shake? Or do you think it's unnecessary for, for that level of amateur to, to have to supplement? What's your take on that? Okay, so if, if you hit the gym a couple of times a week, which uh, which is what I'm guessing you're saying, um, creatine is a no. You 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 don't need it. Um, vitamins, yes, because if you feel like vitamins is you know it's a given. Um, if you feel like your you know your daily diet isn't giving you the nutrients that you you should be getting, then regardless you you know uh, of our fitness or not, you should be taking those. Um, in, in 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 fitness and bodybuilding, commonly it's vitamin D three um, and vitamin C and, and vitamin B, uh, especially B twelve, uh, which helps you you know uh, stopping you from from fatiguing. Um, vitamin C generally helps your muscle cells, uh, and vitamin D, which is also good for your immune system and your your bones. Um, it's pretty much everything that the sun's giving you. Um, is probably the best way to put it. Um, so those three are the common. Um, if you're taking protein, I'm going to recommend whey protein. Only if you're vegan, uh, there's plenty of really good plant-based proteins out there now. Um, so you can you can definitely go down that route. The reason why is they as well as where where people believe that protein helps your muscles grow. Yes, it does, but protein is commonly used just for muscle recovery. So if your muscles are recovering and you're training and you're training them and, you, you know, the, the muscle tissue is expanding, then that's how your muscles are growing. But essentially, it's the proteins are for muscle recovery. Okay. Heracles, I really appreciate, I really appreciate this, honestly. You, you're, you're such a gentleman. Um, <laughs> where, can people, where can people get in contact with you? Where can they follow you? Please don't. Just leave me alone. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think I, I again anybody who wants to reach out to me, social media, uh, Heracles, that's the page. You know, um, I don't want to be giving up my mobile number, but you can have it. It's zero seven. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, it's it's all it's all like I get plenty of DMs on a daily basis. I'm not shy from saying things how they are or, or helping anyone in the best way I can. Uh, I've I've been doing it for years. I've I if I'm honest, I've taken a step back from doing so many regular posts as they used to it's like you said you know you get to a point where you realize bodybuilding isn't life it's uh, unless it's a career for you and you you know you want to achieve and you want to do something at a professional level for me which started off to be a hobby and and then a passion uh which should probably which will probably stay but my my my, my main focus is always going to be my professional career in it and my full focus is my family um and I think youths who are listening to this, you know, um, keep it a hobby. Don't, don't, don't go down the route of, of such supplements without the knowledge. Um, uh, reach out to anyone, you know, for, for any level of guidance. Don't ever be ashamed to take advice. I never was. If I felt like I was doing something wrong at the gym and someone came and told me, I'd, I'd actually be grateful for that advice. Because I might have learned something, but you know, so even if you might be doing it right, just take their advice on board. Um, that's how you learn. Just watch and learn, ask and learn, uh, and that's all, Louis. So thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. We really appreciate you. Right.